Hello, how's uh, how's Hi, everybody everyone. doing? <laughs> um, um, yeah, we're about to get started. Thank you so much for coming. Um, yeah, we are excited to be here um, talking about sanity today. Um, I see people are already doing it, but let us uh, let us know where where you are, um, where you're located. Yeah, I've been watching the chat with interest. I'm seeing. What did I say? Belgrade, London. I hear the weather's really bad right now. It's a little bit gloomy there today from some of our coworkers there. Um, yep. And thank you all for who are joining in from Europe. I know it's your evening. Appreciate it. I, I saw rainy London. Um, I like the the uh, descriptions along with uh, along with where you are. Um, it's currently surprisingly early spring in Michigan. So more <laughs> <laughs> more descriptions there. Yeah. Well, hey, um, I'll go ahead and start off with some intros, but um, I am Ken. Um, I'm located here in Kansas City, where it's very sunny and actually uh, pretty warm today. Um, I am a solution engineer here at Sanity. So I have the pleasure um, of really working uh, with our enterprise customers and helping them with solutions and bring their um, amazing experiences to life. Um, pass it over to you, Carolina. Hi, I'm Carolina. I'm also on the solution engineering team here at Sanity. Uh, yes, we work really closely with customers to help them make the most out of the product. I'm coming in from Brooklyn, New York. I saw someone else point out that it is sunny and not too cold uh, here today. Um, yeah, happy to see everybody. I guess I'll introduce what Sanity is for those of you who may not be. Oh, I see a Go Chiefs. Yeah, very good. I won't take up stands on this. Uh, <laughs> I see, I'm see. i happy to introduce Sanity. For those of you who may not be familiar, I'm going to close the chat so I don't get distracted again. Um, so I, if you're just getting to know us, Sanity is the composable content platform. Uh, we're used by brands like Sonos, Skims, and Spotify, and other companies whose names don't start with an S to power the content layer of their digital engagement strategies. Um, we think it's super important because content is the core of the connection that you have with your customers. And with Sanity, you make those connections richer with connected and cohesive content across every touch point and from everybody at your company. Yeah, all the, all the S, S companies. Um, today, Carolina and I have prepared a couple of demos to show you. Um, just you know, show you around the Sanity platform. Um, this also includes a deep dive into AI Assist. Um, between each demo, uh, we'll, we'll have a Q&A session and hear your feedback. Um, so please keep the chat fired up and we will keep, keep an eye on that. Um, yes, please do post any questions that you have. We'll definitely try to get to as many as we can. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we also, uh, we're going to start with a poll. Um, and like I, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about AI Assist a little bit later on, um, and even in the first demo. Uh, so let's just start with a pulse check to see uh, you know, how you all are or aren't using AI today. Um, the poll is already up, uh, but the question is, uh, which reflects you or your team uh, or your team's use of AI for content work? Um, while we... Um, we're going to go ahead and start the, uh, you know, fire off the first demo. Um, but yeah, feel free to go ahead and keep uh, keep putting your answers um, in the poll. And um, yeah, so for now, let's go ahead and hop into the first end-to-end uh, -end Sanity demo. Uh, you'll see how content teams thrive um, in, in our modern CMS um, and how we really tailor it to editors' goals. Uh, I'll show you an example, um, you know, of just typical day-to-day -day use, um, workflows, and you can gain a deeper understanding of sanity. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and fire that off. Here we have an e-commerce business, Aqua. We're known among interior design circles for craft home goods. You definitely won't find our brand on Amazon, and as a marketer, I rely on our website to bring our bespoke products and creators to life. We're also an online magazine. Our editorial team writes about design trends, makers, and top designers. This content draws people to our brand, builds loyalty, and it sells. 
To drive conversion, we weave commerce throughout the editorial. If a product in this lifestyle shot catches the reader's eye, they can add it to their cart right here. What's super powerful about this is that I can add these callouts without a developer. That's because our dev team can customize the interface that I work in, the Sanity Studio, to support any creative endeavors I have. I'll show you an example of this as I take you through a typical day. It always includes some maintenance and small tasks. First on my list is to swap out this image that we have highlighted here, as we need more exposure to a different color that's not selling as fast. Let's hop in the Sanity Studio. Here, I can see the content I need to update, and with a single click, open the exact right field. Because our e-commerce engine is synced, I can see all the product variants and choose the color we need to promote. Great, that's all set. As I was working on this, I got the heads up from our product team that a creator's name was misspelled. I need to fix this ASAP. This used to be the type of interruption that would take hours to track down everywhere the creator's name is mentioned and make a bunch of repetitive updates, but not with Sanity. Because our content is stored and managed centrally, I can just click from any instance where this creator's name appears, like right here or right here. Make the update and publish. Lucy's name has been fixed everywhere. Time saved, mistakes avoided. I'll just comment to our product team to let them know this has been fixed. Next on my list is launching a new page for a pop-up event we're hosting. My event coordinator has permissions to edit new events, but not to create new ones, which allows us to keep some guardrails in place. I'll go ahead and give my event a title and a slug, and then I'll let my teammate know it's ready for them to edit. All of my teammates and I are free to hop in and out without locking each other out. That's been a big pain point of ours on other solutions. With Sanity, there's no friction when all hands are on deck. With those tasks done, I'll get to the strategic work on my plate for the day. A bit of testing. This guide hasn't been receiving the amount of traffic we expected. So to see if we can draw more people in, we'll experiment with some headline alternatives. This is another example of how our devs have customized the studio to our process building fields for A-B testing right into our workflow. It's integrated with our testing platform, so it's seamless for me to send the right variants to our front end. I'll use Sanity's native AI feature, AI Assist, to suggest a few alternative headlines for me. This always gets me past writer's block. Sanity's AI Assist works alongside me, just like another teammate. No bottlenecks or collisions. Great. Now I'll use Sanity's AI Assist to help me translate a page. First, I'll go ahead and create a Norwegian copy of this page. All right, now I'll hop over to it. Now with AI Assist, I can simply translate this document. With other tools, I'd need to send this out for full translation, but with AI Assist, I'm able to translate this entire document full of different content types with just one click. Instead of tediously translating every word, my language experts simply just review this for accuracy. Finally, back on our English page, I want to add an image to our body content here. You'll see there aren't tens of versions of the same image creating confusion and slowing me down. That's because in Sanity, unlike other platforms, I upload a single high-res image, select it, choose a focal point, and that's it. 
Sanity optimizes the aspect ratio, cropping, and compression for each placement across our website, app, you name it. Everything renders just right, and I get hours back in my day. It feels like magic. Once I'm ready, I can mark this ready for review and assign it to a colleague. So we've done a good bit of content creation and management. Now we're going to do some configuration work, and we're empowered to do so without leaning on our developers. By clicking in the structure, I can see all the content types we've created to power our digital experiences. These are all unique to our business. Sanity lets us create the exact right content model for us. We're not boxed in like in other systems. These aren't one-to-one -one mappings of our website pages. They're content types that we rely on to run our business. Content types can be anything from color themes that are managed centrally and used across content to products that are synced from our e-commerce engine. This is what structured content, the core principle of sanity, is all about. We can reuse and display shared content like product fields anywhere on our mobile app, ad platform, you name it. It saves me a ton of time as I keep everything up to date and accurate. Next on my list is the increase of visibility of one of our creators, Lucy. She was just featured in a major design magazine's fresh faces list. So I want to make the most of that traffic with a dedicated page filtering to her products. Here on this filter, I'll simply assign a color theme. Let's go with this blue. I'll create a new title. And I'll go ahead and select a material. And then of course, select Lucy. I'll go ahead and publish this. And then if we hop to our front end, we can see Lucy's new page for Jesmonite, just like we created. I work fast and confidently in the Sanity Studio because my developer team has built in clear custom guidance and guardrails to support me. Autonomy to do this work is huge. It saves us so much back and forth, and I'm not held up in developer backlogs. I can spin up new content and experiments fast, and developers are freed up to build new features. Our experiences are fresher, we're innovating more, and driving growth. So I've given you a tour of where I work as a merchandiser, but we also have a dedicated workspace for our editorial team. Again, because Sanity Studio can be configured and customized, their studio looks very different. It's tailored to the content types they care about, reducing clutter so they can move fast, and protects them from accidentally making an e-commerce change. Critically, both of our studios are looking into the same centralized backend, Sanity's Content Lake. So to summarize, Sanity helps us engage without constraint, supercharge our content capacity, and future-proof our tech stack. With Sanity, we can deliver on anything we dream up to engage our customers. Devs have the right size building blocks to bring any idea to life, both for customers and content teams. Content teams ship faster by reusing content and working with a tailored visual editing UI. Sanity will evolve with us as we integrate new best of breed services, data sources, or content types. No replatforming needed. All in all, we're driving growth with streamlined content management, fresher experiences, and more innovation. Thanks, right. past Ken. Hello. <laughs> that past um, Ken is my, is my favorite Ken. Oh. So we'd love to take some of the, the questions and, and comments that you've made. I think the first one, maybe it's just me being egotistical. I saw one from Spencer Begg saying uh, that his PM's head just exploded. I think that was during AI creating alternative sort of experimental titles, but I'd love a confirmation. I think that those are... Kind of notoriously hard to make so I'd love to know more yep a b testing got it thank you um what else let's see let's have a scroll through yeah um <clears throat> i have one and I'm, I'm not sure i actually understand the question um but we can give it a go um how does asset and brand management sync for teams uh sync for teams is best approached including digital ad assets 
social posting, et cetera. Um, do, do you have any answer for that, Carolina? Or should I take a stab? Sure, we can try it. So yes, asset and brand management syncing. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that this means that we want to have the same sort of, let's say, image on an open graph image on and previews and maybe also post that over to social networks. Um, we have another great demo for this. I wish we'd shown it in this one, but usually, I mean, that, that kind of really fits, fits in the sanity of this promise about being composable, right? Is that you can have a single source of truth where you might sort of create that product document, but that product document might have sort of an image, let's say brand image. Um, and when you hit publish or have a custom document action, maybe that also sends something over to Twitter and you can also build into sort of the meta SEO field of your document things like this is my open graph image, et cetera. Um, so I'm guessing that that's what's meant, but please do let me know if I completely flubbed that question. Cool, cool. Thanks for <clears throat> thanks for that. Yeah, I think that, that that's, a, that's a great, great answer. Um, I have another question here. Um, what commerce platforms integrate with Sanity? Does editing product data sync back to the PIM or can you enrich data in Sanity? Um, yeah, I can I can take that one. Um, so you can sync any e-commerce solution um, with Sanity. Uh, usually, this happens um, you know via like a webhook that will send um, send some data to Sanity. Uh, we have a pre-built uh, Shopify connection that um, it works as an app in Shopify, and it will connect to your Sanity data set and um, sync your data back and forth. Um, and once your data is in Sanity, you can decorate it and enhance it with more content. Um, and then you can use those you know, smart references that Sanity uses to um, really enrich your, your products, you know, tell a story, um, and allow editors to um, add great, uh, great, great content to the products, to the product landing pages, um, and around your store. Well, cool. I can take the next one. Let's see. Uh, structured still config. I'm not sure which one that was or what, what part of the structure tool was, was built there. But I mean, so give kind of a more general approach and then maybe we can get into specifics. Um, you're, and you can build sort of a custom desk list structure, which are those sort of vertical sort of lists of documents that Ken was clicking into to get into a particular document um, to filter based on some parameter. So let's say, Give me all products that belong to the bathroom tag, for example, um, or even by things like date, et cetera. So it's a super useful tool. Um, I know that it can maybe be a bit daunting to get started with, but I think it makes a huge UX uh, improvement for your editors. Yeah, I think some of my favorite <clears throat> um, favorite ways to filter is, you know, like recently edited products or recently added um, pages, um, sort of keeping the, the fresh, um, hot content at the top of that structure list. Um, here, I've got another one in the chat. Um, we'll learn, would love to learn more about how product pages can have dynamic layouts based on rules and A-B tests. Specifically, I'm curious on how, how it could be applied to performing arts uh, organizations where concerts are our products with different selling points. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. Um, with Insanity, you can, um, you really have the power to structure your content um, the way that your front end application um, can best use it. Um, so we often see, you know, A-B tests work in a way where you have a, a type of content and then you have an actual structure under that where you have, uh, you know, title A, title B, title C, and you can feed that data programmatically to your front end and let your um, the, the platform that, that runs your A-B testing, um, you, you feed your data to that and that will make the, make the decision um, on which piece of content to show. Um, and this, you know, you can use this pretty, you know, but fairly nested and deep. Um, let's say you have a, an entire page layout, you can have an entire page layout for your A experience, an entire different page layout um, for your B experience and power those um, those experiences with sanity. Yeah, that's a great great answer. I think because we we used to have a sort of tagline saying content is data, 
Um, and what that means is that we can read all that is data and just have some kind of rules based uh, display, right? So if if a parameter equals X, then show this thing. I think that's a super powerful, powerful way of doing it. Cool. Um, I think our poll got cut off short um, last time before the uh, before the the demo started. Oh, um, should we bring it back up? Yeah, I I think either bring it back up or yeah. There we go. So I think we I think maybe we 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 stall here. Give people a, a second to to finish answering. For those of you, we, we've been gathering your questions and we would love to respond to them in an email with the recording link. So I, I think that um, we'll, we'll follow up on any of these and, and do reach out to the team as well. We are hopefully really gonna be on top of the no doubt deluge of, of form entries here and we'll get back to you in whatever way we can or you can go to the community as well, uh, which we're also in. Yeah. Um... Okay. Do um, are we ready to move on to the um, see the results? Any... Maybe. Oh Let's yeah. Pull. Okay. Um, I don't see any percentages, but maybe this is my monitor. <laughs> same. We could. I think we can bring it back. Bring back the results um, after the next part of the demo as well. Yeah, that sounds great. And maybe. Maybe we'll see how relevant that, that demo was. So yes, let's move on to doing a deep dive into AI Assist, uh, Ken. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna roll roll that next uh, part of the demo now. All right, let's go. Or we can hang out. I think that's fine too. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> We're here together because, as promised, we're going to do a deep dive into AI Assist, which, as we saw, is fully integrated into Sanity Studio. Um, there are a lot of AI features and promises out there, so we want to make sure that you know how this can bring you real value today um, and maybe why working with AI and Sanity is a little bit different. So one of those reasons is that AI Assist works with you in a really deep way within your own context and content types. So I wanted to show us first how our AI Assist tool knows about our content types, the shape of our document, and even complex formatting rules like headers and dynamic components. Sure. Um, how about we take a look, see it, see it in action? Yeah, let's look. OK. Um, to really start this, uh, the first thing I want to do is um, really start to scaffold out a body for my article. Um, this is like a long form article for, let's say, like an editorial audience, right? Something like a listicle or some other thing that we want to engage our readers with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> and as an editor, um, you know, I really want just a good starting point with some bullet points, something to just get me going, get me past um, past writer's block. To, um, to this, yes, please. Mm -hmm. No, no, continue. <laughs> to do this, um, I'm going to run a command called scaffold a new guide. Um, I want to start first by just looking at what the instructions look like. And just to kind of tell, so we can look at how simple the instructions really are. Um, my instructions here are basically telling this to, um, there we go. My instructions here are really just telling us, telling AI to uh, write the body of an article um, based on the provided title, um, title of the article. You've already written a really engaging title, so I'm pleased about that. But I also see that you're giving it some additional instructions here. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's going to provide me five bullet points, and um, I'm actually able to give it some some uh, some context. You know, say talk about the history of the topic, the use case, and the future of the topic. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm providing this instructions on what types of actual um, objects to use. So within our portable text editor, we have these different types of content here, and um, if I scroll down, I can see the allowed types that our AI AI assist can actually call. Um, oh, that's really nice. I see that, like, for example, you're not letting it 
let's say possibly hallucinate an Instagram link that doesn't exist. We're keeping it tight just to those things that we know it's good at. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, finally, with my instructions, I'm just telling it to finish off with um, a heading of use cases and then provide three bullet points um, for use cases. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and run this and, and see what we get. I'll go ahead and expand the editor so we can see this work in real yeah, time. We already we have our so. we have our purple AI assist indicator. I do love seeing it go line by line. I mean, that means that you can like, if you want to edit the first line, you're fine. I mean, again, there's never any race conditions in the studio, but um, you're able to kind of stay out of its way. You're able to, to do your own thing while it works elsewhere. Sure. Um, we go ahead and see that this actually provided us some some embedded um, types of objects. And, and this one, you know, is our first one. It's a call out that AI Assist was aware of our actual content model and content structure. Well, we've also got those H3s. We've got unordered lists. We've got ordered lists. It's really run the gamut of possible things you can put inside a P tag yeah. or outside of it. So this this sped us up a lot. As, a, as an editor, I feel like I'm ready to kind of hop in. You know, this kind of got my got my brain churning, got uh, got the gears working, and, um, and yeah. And so this was this was a great start for us. Yeah. So in the real world, you'll add your touch and human voice, and again, just actually create the article. But but we've got a, a lot of sort of deeply uh, formatted and nested things we can work off. So yes, once we've uh, generated our document, we now have sort of a starting point where we'll go through and we'll actually add the voice and color that we want to add. We just now have some facts and other useful information that we might use as we start drafting things. And once all that creative work is done, I think we can start uh, with the other part of AI Assist that we'd love to show to you, uh, which is translations. Uh, Ken, I know that you talk about translations with our customers a lot, so maybe you can talk about the different patterns and, and what we'll be showing here. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we really have two types of translations here at Sanity. We have our document level translations, which translate all the fields in a document. And then we have just field level translations, which are more one-off translations of single fields. Uh, the first thing I want to look at is the document level translation. And I want to make a copy of this document and open that up. And okay. I've already done this, but yes, we're using our document internationalization plugin here where I can open up this Norwegian version. By default, it just copies over that English content, um, which is kind of, it's great because you might have yeah. some fields that you want to persist between them, or you might yeah. want to work on a field one at a time, but you're going to show us something different, I think. Yeah, you know, and it gets our editors a, a place to start um, if they are translating this by hand. But what we're going to do is have AI Assist translate this for us. Um, to do that, you can click the AI Assist button and just click Translate Document. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so what does that instruction look like? Is that something that you, you had to write yourself? Um, no, it actually comes out of the box um, with the new updates to our AI Assist um, plugin. Oh, incredible. Yeah, it's no work required. Um, so yeah, you can see as it was doing before, it's going field by field, probably uh, item by item here in our rich tags, even that call out. So it's maintaining our formatting, it's also maintaining that component. And now it's done. That was less than a minute. And we now, again, have a starting point for, for showing translations and being able to um, edit and make things sort of more culturally relevant, whatever we need to do. But we now have done a lot of work um, just to get started. Sure. Yeah, you know, it's 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 really quick for AI Assist to um, to make these translations for us and to give give our editors that that great um, starting point. To... And to your point, this uh, translation pattern is really good if we have kind of these long form documents where almost everything should be translated, but there's other ways that we might use translation. Okay, so right, we just talked about sort of. Um, having everything in a in an entire document be translated, but sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you just want to translate a couple of things. Um, Ken, I know you're close to our customers who are also following this pattern. Maybe you have more to say about it. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, like you said, there, there, are, there are times when translating all the fields in a document makes sense, but there are also times when just translating certain fields um, is a better experience for the editor. 
um, and it keeps your data cleaner. Um, this is an example of a, a person, a presenter, and we don't want to translate the name or the slug or the image, but we do want to translate the biography. Um, right. Her name is going to be the same and uh, throughout all languages, so it doesn't really make sense to have to submit that or, or put that through a translator. Yeah, absolutely. And we could have a, a, you know, a number of fields here that do need to be translated. In this case, we just have one. Um, but what we can do is go up to our AI Assist, translate fields, and we can select um, the language we want to translate from and select the languages that we want to translate to. In this case, we just have Norwegian as our other language. But if we did have two, three, four, five different languages, we could translate to all of those at one time. And again, you didn't have to set this up, right? It's just reading the possible languages and the That's sources. correct. Nice. That's correct. Um, and yeah, there she is in Norwegian. Excellent. Great. So now we have this translated biography, and we are good to go. Um, maybe it's time to move on to our next feature. So we've spoken a lot about uh, generating content. But large language models are good at more than just generating content. Um, yes, I think we can look back at that article we were just working on, our coffee, our coasters, sorry, our coasters article. Um, if you go back to, to our magazine space and uh, the English version. Um, so by indexing your project's content in the content link, we can also take advantage of of that ability of large language models to be able to take in a lot of content and, and make sense of them and index them. And we can use that to surface relevant content whenever we need to. So yeah, this feature is great when I want something that's kind of like the thing I'm writing about, but I haven't memorized everything on my site. Um, it's able to sort of take in that information and also just the relevant parts of that information. So um, I guess I'll go ahead and click the, the instruction here. Yeah. Just um, okay. <clears throat> this is really time saving for our editors to not have to um, really even know about the content because the Sanity, uh, Sanity Studio knows about what our content is. Um, it can really recommend similar pieces of content. I see that in the instruction itself, you've called out some, some fields for it to pay attention to, but we could also make that part of our indexing process, right? But we could also just say, you know, we're only indexing this part or that part. So yeah. that also makes it really, really easy. Um, yeah. And I see that, yeah, what it suggested are, I'm in an article about coasters and I have things about living rooms and coffee tables, which seems pretty relevant. I have other content around, around bathrooms and that kind of thing. So, um, we're able to kind of just choose what's relevant. Yeah, and this is really powerful. This is this is an actual reference to these documents. So this isn't just static text or, mm -hmm. um, you know, just just hard hard copy. This is an actual programmatic representation. Right. These are these are now relationships between documents too, which we've shown in other demos can be very powerful for a number of things. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So in the spirit of scaffolding things, as we were talking about before, we might want to look at something more fun, like generating images. Yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Um, this, you know, a lot of times when when you start a new uh, a new article, you might be waiting on a designer to get you get you an image or for an illustration to be made. Um, so now with uh, our, our image generation uh, with AI Assist, you can really have some sort of visual lorem ipsum um, or image representation of lorem ipsum. So we can start with I'm, the <laughs> I'm being very detailed. So as we all know from generating images in our own lives, uh, you know, we want to sort of be as specific as possible. Um, like we said, it's just lorem ipsum, so it's just filler, but uh, I'm just writing something fun here and oil painting. And I think I just clicked that instruction right here, right? That's right. Um, I think having fun is recommended in this case. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably in the docs, yes. 
Um, so as it works here, you'll notice that again, I I'm generating caption also from what I've written here, and now it's going to to work through and upload kind of just the raw image, which I think will show up in my media browser. They look great, uh, but now this is an image that I can actually see everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah, this is this is amazing. Um, it is good, yes. But I can also rerun this, right? Now I have this prompt. I can run it as many times as I want, right? This is also something that I think that we're used to in our workflows using other other AI tools. But if I wanted to get more serious or if people wanted to know what my prompt was, it's now here. I'm a little bit, you know, shy about this one, so I might be more serious. You might class it up a little bit. I, yes, let's see something that's maybe more realistic for this article. There you go. And again, I can rerun. So again, we're trying to, the studio itself is, is a place to kind of, again, just be a bit creative and and be able to have the kind of ease of tools that we're, we're used to yeah. um, while it works on other things. I'll wait for this one to be done. And then I think we can, uh, we can hopefully show a, a nice serious image and then, and then be able to see, this looks great. Uh, yeah. That's so many coffee cups. Um, yeah, I generated. <laughs> it's true. Well, cool. Well, thanks so much for showing that, Carolina. Um, Thank yeah. you, Ken, for all of your, your guidance on, on those prompts and how we can use AI Assist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think to sum this up, we can really see that AI Assist helps us in numerous ways. Um, you know, we can create complex content with formatting and really embed different elements into our text. We can also use it to translate things with that same complexity, all that formatting, and not lose any of it as we move from locale to locale. Sure. Um, you know, talking about references and AI knowing our content, um, you know, AI can read from our content lake and it can provide us precise index content. Um, that's really powerful, saving, saving editors time. And again, as we're in a workflow and maybe waiting on other images or, or want to get some visuals out, we can use it to generate images for whatever we need within that workflow. Yeah. Well, Carolina, um, thanks so much for joining me and uh, really appreciate you spending the time to, to help out. Yeah, I guess that's it for us. Thank you so much. And do feel free to play around and we'll see what you make. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Bye. All right, uh, we are we are back from the past. Our present selves, yes. Um, so we want to share the results of that poll very quickly since we we made you do that, and thank you very much. And so then we'll go to a few of those questions before we wrap up, and I'll start scrolling now to to grab a few. All right. Um, so question one. one, yeah, I'll take this one. Um, when translating content, how does the slug work? Uh, great question. Doesn't really touch AI Assist very much, but happy to sort of speak about strategies here. So I think we know that for a lot of uh, companies, SEO really improves for a localized slug. There are reasons to do this. So in that, sibling document that we saw in the demo and we had the one article in English and the one article in Norwegian. Um, you can have this sort of function independently. We sometimes have customers who fall back to both just because they don't want to have to sort of manage it. So it depends on your implementation. But from Sandy's perspective, it's just another field. So um, you can assign those slugs to any, any locale that you'd like or even have search for uniqueness or use any of the other kinds of nice slug functions that we have uh, within that locale. So filter only to documents within Norwegian and make sure that you're only checking uniqueness there, for example. So um, definitely you're able to do the strategy that you'd like to uh, within, uh, just within your content model. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> just a note, I see that our poll did not show the results to the viewer side. Um, if we get an update on that, we will share that. Um, <laughs> But we'll we'll move on with uh, with some yes. questions. Um, oh, it's going to be an email. Okay, great. Yes, interesting. They didn't really, they really didn't want us to spoil it, so I yeah. guess you'll have to open up that email that we'll send you afterwards. Sorry about that. Just uh, keeping everybody on the hook. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, the next question that I see here, um, 
can we expose parts of sanity uh, content management on an external site, for example, to let users add blog posts or let vendors upload images for uh, for contests we are running? Um, yeah, that's <clears throat> that's a, a great question. Um, sanity, you know, uh, like like most uh, most databases, we have uh, a very robust and flexible API. Um, you know, you can uh, hook this API up to to an external site and have data feed um, back into your Sanity Studio. Um, so of course, uh, you know, building in uh, some, some guardrails and um, things like that, like you normally would with a database um, is great. Um, but this is, this is really amazing. I, I've actually used this in the past um, for a simple, a simple feedback of like a product review where I stored reviews in my Sanity uh, database. Um, there are other tools that, that can do that um, as well, but if it makes sense to have that in your Sanity Studio, um, you can do that and reference the, the product, um, in my case, that the review was used for. We do it on our live site as well. So if you go to Sanity.io and look at our docs, anything, any feedback that you put in the docs or even those emojis, all make it back to the studio. And yes, we do look at them. So be nice, maybe. But <laughs> that's that's on us. But yes, it's something that we can then use as data, right? It's something that we can use to sort of surface things that, that we need to work on. So definitely a useful use case. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I'm just, just scrolling down to see there's a new question. Um, can we store data with the assets instead of saving them on the field um, in the document? Or alternatively, choose a document type that represents an asset. Um, yes, yeah, I mean, um, Carolina, feel free to, to hop in at the end of this question or end of this answer, but um, yes, um, doc or assets in Sanity are stored um, as documents and you can add um, as many pieces of um, additional uh, data on top of that. So oftentimes we'll see you know, tags, um, alt tags, captions, um, different pieces of content stored alongside the actual image. Yep, exactly. The Sanity image asset document is kind of an abstraction. And even I think you might've seen sort of the, our media browser where you're able to select different images and that they have tags where you can filter along tags. I like just arbitrary data that's being patched to that image asset document. So we definitely have users. And I think there's some good guides too that store things like uh, credits and alt text and captions all in that document, which is a good idea because it's a single source of truth and you don't want to have to write your alt text over and over again. Um, maybe we can send a link to that guide afterward, but um, we let our colleagues ask you. Um, but yeah, very good. Good call there. Cool. Um, I believe that is all the questions that made it into, into my, my view here. Um, anything else um, from you, Carolina? Anything that I've missed? No, I guess we'll we'll, we'll close up, perhaps. Um, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Um, we look forward to communicating with you further via email. Um, but yeah, can I let you say goodbye as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I second that. Um, <clears throat> just appreciate everybody spending the time to be here and spend time with current and past Ken and Carolina. Um, uh, no, no future versions of us today, but yeah. <laughs> maybe AI Assist can help us with that at, at some point. Um, Great. All right. Well, that, that is it for us. Keep an eye on your email for the poll results. And um, like we said, feel free to um, you know continue asking questions in the uh, Sanity uh, Slack channel. Um, I'm in there. Carolina's in there. And um, yeah, we, we look forward to seeing those. And um, yeah, just appreciate everybody being here. Thanks so much, Val.